My name is Anthony, and I'll be drawing for you. Hey Planet Earth, we meet again. Welcome to Anthony Draws For You, the channel where no idea is too crazy. All right, so here's what I got in store for you today. Most people who know me know that I'm addicted to music. All genres, all decades. I grew up playing guitar and I played just a little bit of saxophone and at any point I was always in some band or other. So today I thought it might be fun to flip through the pages of pop culture history and sort of revisit and redesign those classic album covers. The music I use today is from EpidemicSound.com, which is a gigantic library of royalty-free music. And within that library, I tried to find the closest sounding tracks that reflect the sound from the album cover that I'm recreating today. So there's three album covers, three illustrations total for you today. The third one's gonna be blatantly obvious because the name is like right on there, but only because the text and the image go hand in hand with each other and you'll see when we get to that part of the video. Uh, but for the first two, let's see how many of you can guess which one they're from. This was a fun challenge. I think I'm gonna do something like this again, only next time I think I'm gonna mash up different album covers into the same image and see if there's any sort of chemistry between them. Join the fun, fill that comment section. Give me your weirdest, most random combination of album covers. I'll take the funniest ones and I'll recreate them and mash them up for the next time. Since I'm still new here at YouTube, I'm going to be posting a new video every day this week and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be my posting schedule beyond that. And make sure to stick around to the end of this video because I put together a slideshow using a bunch of my cartoons past to give you a better idea of what to expect on my channel. My services are available for anybody who needs it, whether you're an individual looking to get a gift for a friend or if you're a business and you have some rebranding needs. I do logos, company letterheads, restaurant menus, commercial storyboarding, presentations, slideshows, surfboards, skateboards, snowboards, skis. If you give me a surface, I'll give you my A-game. And autograph prints are available for anything that you see me create on this channel. To find out more, click the link in the description at the bottom of this video. And for all business inquiries, please contact Susan at the office. Business out of the way, let's get on to the fun stuff. Cue the music, let's begin. So my gut instinct for this one was to go immediately steampunk. I Google image searched like a whole bunch of Jules Verne, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, early 1900s deep sea diving when they had like these gigantic metal suits. And I thought, well, that's just the perfect juxtaposition for this album cover. When I Google image searched the Nautilus, uh, the ship from 20,000 Leagues, I totally forgot how cool this ship actually was. It, it's actually like modeled after a fish. I did a little bit of quick light reading. I know that Jules Verne was all about the science fiction, but I didn't realize just how heavy into the science part he actually was. Doing this picture actually makes me want to go back and read the whole thing. I, re I remember reading the adapted version when I was a kid. You know, they give you like the 50 page version of it. And I think I was just way too young to really appreciate the value of Jules Verne's contribution to that genre. And as a big fan of steampunk, I think I'm sort of committing a little bit of a crime by not knowing more about Jules Verne and his work. So this was a fun little experiment that got me a little bit more in touch with a whole bunch of subjects that I had forgotten I had a lot of interest in. Oh yeah, adding the treasure was sort of an afterthought and I realized that and like once I started going back and adding more treasure, I really noticed like how little there actually was. So the more I added, the more I noticed was missing. So then I said, all right, well, I kind of have to cheat a little bit. And so like what I did was I made these stacks of coins and I did a little bit of copy paste and sort of varied up the heights and everything. And I just sort of put them like behind each other. I think the end result worked and I'm happy with how it came out, but there is a tiny smidge of guilt that I <laughs> that I feel from it because I know that I cut some corners. 
Okay, so now for this next one, I had a very basic cyberpunk idea. I, I only sort of knew where I was going with it. And I had like seven or eight separate ideas that, that spawned from this. And I had all of these elements that I wanted to combine. I sort of, this was sort of like a little bit of improv comedy with myself. Like the golden rule of improv comedy, I've been told is always say yes and. So whatever comes up, you just say yes and you just add on top of it. So for this one, I just kept adding like punchline on top of punchline, just different things that gave it new context. And I pretty much came to the conclusion that nobody would understand the many jokes except for me. Because the viewer would just look at it and say like, I have no idea what I'm looking at right now. I had this whole other thing going on with the neon signs underneath where it says computer blues, like the sign of the club. There was gonna be a purple banana and it would have said searching 97% complete. Yeah, there was, there was a whole thing with a truck involved, and I think I pretty much gave away where this is from, if it wasn't obvious enough already. Oh yeah, uh, the symbol down there. Yeah, I kind of forgot that makes it pretty obvious. I had about like, I had like three or four different versions of this guy's bike too. I wanted to make something that was like really sleek and that sort of clean type of futuristic, but I also wanted it to be a little bit savage. Oh, and another hashtag, desktop confessional. I totally beefed on the stairs. I was warping this and I couldn't decide what height to make everything. And once I decided to make the stairs fire escape rather than like stairs going up to the first floor, this is like several stories high. Once I decided to change the height of everything, that's when my whole warping perspective was kind of falling off the rails but I rectified it and as you can see like later on in the picture it's starting to it's starting to be a little bit more even If I were to go back and work on this now, I think I might add more musical elements to it. I wanted to jazz it up a little more, but I didn't want to distract too much and shift the focus away from what connects it to the original album cover. Oh, and for this last one, I have a quick public service announcement. Don't delete stuff until you're sure you're done using it. If you notice, I don't actually have the footage of me doing the pencils for this one by hand. That's because I deleted that footage by mistake. So kids, if you want to get into YouTubing, if you want to get into video editing of any kind, do yourself a favor and double check to make sure that you have everything you need before you clear off the memory on any of your devices. <laughs> I will tell you though, this one, even though this one is more basic than the others, this was by far the hardest one for me, and I'll tell you why. For artwork done in tapestry in particular, the shapes are a lot more simplified because of the fact that it's woven onto the piece of fabric. And the more images that I looked through, the more difficult it became for me to consciously forget many of the lessons that I've learned over the years. If you want to laugh, there was actually a medieval meme, like, I don't know, five, six years ago or whatever, and that's actually the source from which I drew a lot of reference. <laughs> I don't know, I think the format of the meme sort of forces it 
to have those cliches that just work all the time. Because this is for parody and because this is not authentic medieval tapestry, I leaned a little bit more towards the silly and I leaned a little bit more towards the, the internet's version of it. But again, in order to achieve this effect, I had to stop myself several times from developing it too much. And I'd have to fight my instincts to want to add depth when this drawing in particular calls for simplicity. All right, that wraps it up for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Once again, you have been watching Anthony Draws For You, the channel where no idea is too crazy. Did you enjoy this video? Tell me by hitting that like button. Be on the lookout for new content every day this week, and then every Monday, Wednesday, Friday after that for the foreseeable future. I see many cartoons in your future. But in the meantime, let's rock out to some of my cartoons from the past. Cue the outro. Tell me what you're working on right now in the comments section below. Share this video with your friends. Don't forget to pound that like button. Be sure to subscribe to keep the party going. Thank you much, and I'll see you next time.